I'm cooking dampers down here today. Has anyone seen a damper like that one? Better. No, you won't see one better than that, will you? <laughs> I like you. <laughs> Alright. Well, for this crowd, we'll get away from the one little duck. I'll give you a poem, mate. Eh? One of me mums. And my mum taught this to all my girls, my three daughters, and me, from when I was about this big. That's about a wagtail. So there was a little wagtail, and he sat upon a pole. Biggle boggle when he's tail, and pop when he's hull. All right, no one got that? No. All right, it's probably best left alone. What about a little ballad? How's this one? Whoa, 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 life's a bugger, everyone knows you wonder where your money goes. Your mother-in-law has come to stay for another extended holiday. Life's a bugger and that's for sure, it really gets to be a bull. When everything I like to do is illegally moral and fattening too. All right, how's that loosen you up a bit? How's all going anyway? Oh, I got one good. I'm going to ask that again. How's all going, guys? Ah, much better. Thank you. You are awake. Good stuff. All right, guys, we're going to knock up a damper here. There's a few familiar faces from the last show, and they might have to help you out a bit. But why is damper called damper? All right, you're going to have to help them out. No one here can tell me why damper's damper. You've got to be kidding. Why is damper called damper? Because it's bush food. Because why? It's bush food. It's bush food. That's not why it's called damper. It's actually called damper because you damper the fire before you put it in there. So you put it in an open fire, it's too hot, it'll burn. So you actually damper the fire before you put it in. That's why it's called damper. And why is it such a well-known Aussie icon? All around the world, people know Aussies drink Billy tea and eat damper. Why? Really? You call yourself Aussies too, I suppose. You can't. You're a pom. Yeah, you're a pom. Yeah. I've heard some horrible stories about poms, I tell you. And considering the age of the group, I won't say too much about that. <laughs> All right. Damper's such a well-known icon, guys, because... 200 years ago, when we used to travel all around the place to get supplies, so we had to travel to a near town or city, it was easy to chuck a, a bag of flour on the car. Yeah, so I had plenty of flour with me. So I might shoot a wallaby and make a stew along the way, make up a damper, and that would make the food go further. I'm actually the baby out of ten. My old man would often put on top of the dam on top of the stew what he called a dough boy. So he'd make a damper up, flatten it out, and stick it on top of the stew. Yeah? I often use dumplings, but Dad liked his dough boy. So what it does is make the food go further, guys. So that's why it's such a well-known icon. It's been a part of our diet for the last 200 years. Righto. Basic recipe for damper is? Not a measuring cup. Flour and water, thank you. So flour and water will make you a nice damper, guys. That's all you need. However, today for lunch, the last damper I did in the first demonstration was flour and water with a bit of, what was it? She wasn't even listening. Cocky's Joy. Okay, so a bit of golden syrup on it. Yeah? So just flour and water. And what was that damper like, sweetheart? Does that mean good? Yeah, right. Okay, just flour and water, but don't just stick to those standard recipes. Have a play with it. Replace water with beer. Now that's got to be good. Hey, anyway, beer in it'd be all right, wouldn't it? Ginger beer, lemonade, any of that sort of thing. This one here, this one's a savoury damper. So what I've done with it is I've just used the flour and water, which I'm going to do as a demo here, but I've also used a bit of um, herbs, cheese and bacon. Yeah? So we crank it up. What have I got? Half a cup. So I want two cups of flour. Two cups of flour and in me little box of tricks here. So most of the recipes that I do, guys, you'll find are pretty standard and are usually made with whatever I can find in the tucker box. Yeah? So I don't go to a lot of trouble. I don't generally use a lot of herbs and things. Right, so about a handful of cheese in there. And we want a little bit of bacon. 
bit of dead pig. This is one that lost the race over there. <laughs> I like to utilise things like that, not just throw them away. Even the racehorse. I put my money on a racehorse one day. It was a, a sure winner, old mate, reckon. So I backed the horse, damn thing come last. I said, I'd like a piece of you, I cried. And he said, well, you can next week in a hot meat pie. So there's one for the palms. You heard about everything that's going on over there at the moment with the um, beef and that. Well, I got a call from a bloke, Paul, in England. He said to me, who put the roux in the stew? I said, mate, geez, I wish I could find him because he went and put horse in mine too. Right, oh, so a few herbs there, not a lot, about a tablespoon, guys. I don't like a lot, it seems to be too much. Right, oh. Now, the secret to making the perfect damper, who knows what it is? That's not a secret, that's an ingredient. Going to do better than that, girl? Right, oh. The secret is the least amount of moisture to hold the flour together. If it's too wet, you'll end up with something that's very sticky and like glue. We don't want glue. We want something that's a lot like Play-Doh. So something the same consistency of Play-Doh and you're gonna get a pretty good damper out of it. Right, oh, so that's starting to come together. A little bit more water there. Okay. And as I said, play with it, guys. The art, the art of good cooking in the camp ovens is, to, is not to stay with standard things. So play with your food. I know you've always been told not to play with food, but I'm telling you, play with your food. All right, so I'm just kneading that one up. Notice how it's not sticking to anything, and it's quite easy to handle. Right, uh, so right there I've got myself a damper. See, it's not sticking to anything. Quite a good consistency. Now, what I'm going to do is put it on a little bit of alfoil, just so it's easy for me to manage in and out of the camper. Right, oh, so a little bit of flour on that. Damper goes on. Then we're just going to drop him in there. Now that'll take about 20 minutes to half an hour to cook, and we'll have a damper just like that one. Yeah? Okay. What I'm doing here, or the heat source that I'm using here, is actually heat beads, okay? So heat beads are a sponsor of mine. Use heat beads, they're great. In fact, they are one of the better quality coal beads that you can buy, or briquettes, if you will. Um, so use a good quality one, you'll get much better results. Now, I'm using Easy Light ones here today. However, heat beads actually recommend that you don't use those with, he with camp ovens, all right? So being sponsors of mine, I'm just letting you know that. But in future, I'll be using a regular heat bead. They take the same amount to light, or the same amount of time to light, but they're, um, uh, they're not quite as impressive, and I'll show you why shortly. Now to light them, you can put any fire, sit them on a gas burner or use these little bead lighters. Yeah, so I'm going to use two or three of these. We'll use three because I busted the packet. There we go. Alright, so with a camp oven this size, as a rule of thumb what I say to people is if you've got a 12 inch camp oven, the amount of heat beads to use, or how to work out how many beads to use, is if it's a 12 inch camp oven, take two away from 12, pop 10 underneath. If you add two on to 12 inch, put 14 on top. So 10 under, 14 on top for a 12 inch camp oven. And you'll get pretty good results with most things that you try to cook. Okay. Now, they take about half an hour to get going, irrelevant to what sort of bead they are. So I've already got some in here. Now, you can buy these bead lighters from heat beads or other camping stores and things like that, and they're much like a big stein with a handle on them. They're quite easy to, easy to handle. But I'm, of course, huh, rubber glove and fire don't go real good, eh? Right, eh? And just pop that on there like that. Very shortly, that'll burst into flames, and in half an hour, we'll have coals for cooking. Yeah? Any questions about them? I've had some heck time when I first started using heat beads trying to light them. People often ask me, how do you light the damn thing? 
I was very reluctant to share that knowledge because I can tell you there's some uncouth language come out of my shed when I first started playing with them. So I play with them, but basically that's how you light them, just like that. Leave them for about half an hour. They'll go from that black colour to a whole white colour. Like that one. And that'll burn for about two to two and a half hours. So if I want to do a two kilo roast, I drop it straight in the camp oven, put me veggies around it, 10 under, 14 on top, and I can go fishing. Yeah, don't have to worry about it burning. It's a very consistent heat. And as it burns out, it'll only get colder. So don't be too concerned about burning your meals. Enjoy your fishing. Yeah. Right oh. See, isn't that impressive? Don't you like that's why I like to use them, okay? Alright, and often with that one there, I'll put my billy on top and it'll heat the water for me for washing up and that as well. Okay, who wants to have a crack at this damper? Ah, right, oh, there's a few hands going up. Well, I'll just put this out in the esky. Right, oh. Let's see what it's like. <coughs> There we go guys, nice savoury damper. Yeah, pretty good, eh? So I'll bust her up a bit for you as I like to break bread. I'm a very religious man. Who goes to church here? Well, why aren't you there this morning? I've been. You've been to church? I go to that one with the four big crosses on it. Oh, okay. Extra religious. Righto, so I like to break bread, guys. And part of the reason for that is I forgot to bring me bread cutting knife. Right on. Is the old fella's going all right up there too, isn't he? Right on. There's the first half. Now it's nice and hot guys, I'll hit the front row first, here we go. So flour, water, cheese, bacon, what else did I put in it? A few herbs. That's it. Any good? Oh, don't be picky, you'll miss out. Oh, sorry mate. Oh. A pleasure's mine, I'm sure. Uh, no, but you certainly can. I find there's probably enough salt in that bacon, eh? What about the sweet bacon? If you want to. Uh, typical pong. Got to go for the big ones. Eh? You got no bacon? Can you get fanging, girl? There'll be a bit in there somewhere. You want to try it? You can twist your arm, eh? Okay guys, there's a bit of merchandise there for Ranger Nick. There's some cards there, I'll let you, give you my web address, which is rangernick.com.au. But check it out, if you run any troubles when you cook them with stuff like this, give me a hoy and I'll see if I can't help you out steering the right track. Now, I get all over Australia as a celebrity chef or celebrity cook. I work for companies like the Adventure Company Australia, EcoPot and Heat Beads. I actually work for Education Queensland as a unit support officer. Yeah? So 76 hours a fortnight, I see school aged kids from all over Queensland and I teach environmental education and outdoor rec. So I might be abseiling and canoeing one day and hunting for bunyips and digging up dinosaur bones the next. There you go, brother. You ever been to... Well, I heard and get a bit. Right, oh, the hands are going up now. Let's go. Make sure you get one for Mum. <laughs> Make sure Mum, though. I said get one for Mum. Poor old Mum.
That's yummy, is it? Oh, I like you. You're a good girl. How's the damper, guys? Unreal? That's all right. How easy was that? A little guy up in the tree did a deed. Have a go at that, boy. Right, who else wants a bit of damper? Here they are, these young fellas. Did you wash your hands after playing in the dirt? Yeah. Right, oh, no. here, here you go, gentlemen. The last two bits. Self-raising flour. Yeah. If you use plain flour, you'll need to put a bit of um, baking powder or something in. There we go. Lucky last. There you go, pussy cat. Right, oh, guys. I hope you've had a bit of fun. I hope you've even learnt something. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, no worries. Guys, I've got another show here at one o'clock. Um, what sort of damper should I make? I might do some sweet scroll damper. So a sweet scroll damper for this afternoon. Yep, if you're allergic to nuts, I, do, I wouldn't try it at any of it, but it will be a, a scroll, chocolate scroll. So come and have a crack at that one if you like. But um, I hope you have the damper, sweetheart. Gorgeous, eh? Not too bad for a bushy, eh? Alright, so guys, I hope you've enjoyed the show. If you want to stick around and ask any questions, please feel free. And um, we'll see you when the mud's dry, eh?